and we have a new player coming to the NBL 25 we're very excited about, Kelly Leah Pepe. Jeepers! <laughs> <laughs> You know you're big when your muscles have muscles. I actually don't think I could even do that. One of those. I did have NFL. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, for sure. So I, I definitely uh, had some chats and just, you know, thought about the, the idea, flirted with the idea for sure. The NBA, of course, is, is, is a goal of mine. Getting on the boards and just, just doing whatever it takes, you know, just to get us over the edge of the 1% stuff. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll be having my teammates back if, you know, getting a little pushing sub for sure. It's not, it's just ridiculous how quick, how easily he just bounces that. He can jump a bit higher than me, but I, I can uh, bench press a lot more than him, so oh, yeah, I've always been a bit of a shit talker. <laughs> Welcome back to the huddle. This is a very special episode because we've taken a different location and we have a new player coming to the NBL 25 we're very excited about, Kelly Leah Pepe. Kelly, firstly, I was talking about special. Happy birthday, mate. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, I brought you down to the On Athletics Club because it's a gym, and I feel like on a birthday and looking at the size of you, and a lot of fans would agree with me, you do love to the gym, I can imagine. Yeah, nothing better to do than uh, lift on your birthday, so yeah. Let's go have a, a bit of a throw around some weights, okay? You can show me something as well as we learn a little bit about you. Yeah, too easy. Let's go. So I say we bring it to a gym, it's, it's kind of funny to talk about, but you clearly do love the gym. You don't just get that big. Or well, you might get that big naturally somewhat, but when did you fall in love with lifting weights? Uh, definitely in college. Uh, yeah, just being around the trainers and stuff, I fell in love with it. And, and yeah, I just, just fell in love with it. And I just do it every day pretty much. So, yeah, arms, chest, back mix it up and, and even on my off days I, I will get in the gym sometimes too to be honest so yeah at what point did you realize okay there's something special in me that I can really nail in the weight room and I can be stronger and more physically dominant than anyone else I play uh, definitely when I was a freshman in college getting in there uh it's it's kind of where I got my edge you know like I, I realized I can well at first I wasn't I wasn't the strongest but it was like a it was like a game in my head I wanted to get stronger and I just fell in love with it and, and yeah. We're going to have to talk a little bit about the mullet because I was reading some stuff about LMU college days, which I do want to talk about, but that's now become, when, when we think of Kelly, we also think of the arms, but also the mullet. Is it staying for good? Is that, you've, you've locked it in? Oh yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the Aussie culture, you know, the, the Aussie Islander culture. So yeah, it's staying for good for sure. I'm hoping there's n enough weights here for you because it's definitely enough for me, but I haven't broken a sweat in three years. So what do you want to load up there to start? Uh, we'll, we'll warm up into it and, and yeah, we'll see how we go. So right, let's do it. Like. Jeepers. <laughs> I actually don't think I could even do that. One of those to be perfectly honest with you. So you're benching me essentially. And you're just, just throwing it around. <laughs> you know, you're big when your muscles have muscles. When did basketball begin? Because I, I, I look at you, I've watched your career evolve from when you were a teenager. I find it hard to believe that basketball was just going to be your only goal. Was there other sports that you played and excelled at? Uh, I played a bit of footy uh, growing up. Well, it, it's actually funny, because like, I, I grew up in a, a single mothered household, just me, my mum and my sister. And um, yeah, so my mum didn't have too much time, but we had like, we'd have people, I played school sports. And we'd have people calling up the house saying, oh, come join my footy team, come join the rugby team, come play the basketball, cricket, stuff like that. And um, my mum pretty much said, if you can help out, get me the practices and games. And if I make the top team, yeah, I can play basketball. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I did, yeah. Did you get a couple of those AFL potential calls? Oh, uh, well, I, I did have NFL. Uh, oh, coaches. really? Yeah, for sure. So I, I definitely uh, had some chats and just, you know, thought about the, the idea flirted with the idea for sure uh but yeah are I, you an nfl fan oh uh, not not so much so i don't really know much about the game but but they said yeah we can get you out you can <laughs> learn the game and get you in the weight room and and we'll see how it goes maybe you can get drafted but but i, I didn't really <laughs> didn't go in in with that the irony of that is i'm thinking about you walking into a weight room one holding your own but two if they're lining you up in whatever position whether it's a linebacker and then you just go out there with no pads no helmet and they're like mate what are you doing You're like i'm good here right i'm from australia <laughs> yeah. Did you, you grew up, obviously, are you an Australian football fan? Do you like to follow the footy at all? Uh, I, I watched it a little bit. I, I definitely liked playing it a lot more, you know, mm. just tackling guys and running around and that. But I, I don't <laughs> follow it like crazy, but, but I get around like the big hits on YouTube and that for sure, yeah. What kind of kid were you growing up uh, in, at school? Oh, well, well, at first when I was a kid in the class, I was a bit of a troublemaker. <laughs> if, if, I, if I am telling the truth, I was definitely, uh, yeah, I was a bit, bit of a rough kid growing up and, 
And yeah, but as I got to college and, and or oh, in high school as well, mum said you keep getting in trouble, you're not playing basketball. So I definitely had to switch that around. So yeah. <laughs> it seems like you've got a very special relationship with, with your mum. Mm -hmm. Firstly, to get a college scholarship, you said you could never have envisioned that would be possible. What was that like to be able to go back and, and have that sign, the letter of intent, and to be committed to a D1 school, to share that moment with your mum, okay, like this is something very special that I've worked hard towards. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it was, it was a blessing. It was amazing for me and uh, just for my whole family, you know, and just having my last name, uh, being able to do that stuff, you know, for my dad as well, like I'm putting it on for my dad. And, and like I said, without basketball, I, I, w I wouldn't be in that position. I'd probably be somewhere else doing something else. So, yeah, I'm truly blessed for sure. It, it's crazy, like coming back here and being like, oh, this is my job now. Like I, I'm, I'm getting paid to do this. And I'm like, it, yeah, it's it's dream come true for sure. We're doing a shoot, but also you're like, I'm getting a real lift out of this. I'm making sure that I do. I've got an 18 month old child, my back's just cooked, just holding these. Just counting them up, Dad, just counting them up. Were you always going to go to college? Was it something you always wanted to dream and do? Because now the pathway's changed, obviously, it's NIL, there's next stars, but you seemed adamant that college was going to be your direction, and looking back now, it looks like you haven't regretted that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, growing up, I, I honestly wasn't like, didn't know much about the, the college game, but uh, like connections, Mike Dunlap was at LMU at the time and and like, I got into connection with him and I just fell in love with it and I thought, yeah, college is, is going to be the right path for me. So yeah, it's a culture shock, you know, and I was in like the heart of LA. I was like 10 minutes from Venice, like five minutes from the airport. So it did take some adjusting, but, but you know, I, I got my head wrapped around it with the help of the teammates and coaches and, and yeah. I think of Venice, I think of the, the pipes on you, and I feel like that's just a match made in heaven. You ready to roll with this yeah, one? So we're taking breaks in between your, your bench workout, and we're just talking about college and, I guess, adapting, adjusting that first year. You were there five five years, which is a long time for anybody, but it's a that period of time it's huge in in growing up. What did you learn about yourself most? Whether that was again time management, whether it was on the basketball floor, the time management, uh, just how to even like just act like a pro, you know, waking up, uh, just doing the right stuff, and, and there's like, all these distractions in college as mm. well, of, of course, but but just uh, getting right, just living by myself as well. Uh, when I really changed my body as well and got stronger, I started like counting my calories and just, you know, watching what I what I eat and stuff. I, like I switched up my diet and and yeah, I definitely saw changes after that. Do you need me for this one? I should be right. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it's just ridiculous how quick, how easily it just bounces that. You just threw that around like it was a rag doll. Is there any time in college where Strength and conditioning coach said, "Hey, mate, we've got a big game this week. Maybe just just tone back the weights." Uh, I mean, sometimes I can get carried away and get in there too much. But actually, after our games, we the team we used to go and lift after the games, so not not too much of that. But but we're we're smart about it. So so yeah. After your first year, what did you notice most about y yourself? Because you mentioned the adjustment, and again, you've got some pretty good accolades in the classroom as well. Was that important to you as well? That if I'm here, I'm making sure that I get a good degree as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Like I, I was in college, I'm not just there to hoop. I, I went to get a degree as well. You know to amazing scholarship you know like growing up I never thought I'd have the chance to go to college in America and have the opportunity to get my like diploma and stuff like that so so yeah definitely uh my, my teammates in that were doing well in the classroom as well and, and I saw and I was like oh I, I can do that too so I, I definitely locked in and and yeah change it around so sometimes it's good to step away from the court you know like it's not always sunshine and roses like you know always having the best game in the, and all that stuff but but yeah, stepping away, like having fun, you know, I'm in LA, going to the beach and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's good fun, yeah. What are some of your best memories at college? Whether there was a game, whether there was things in particular, can you pinpoint certain memories that you're like, I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life? Yeah, well, well of course, obviously when that, my mullet went viral, that, that, was, yeah. that was pretty cool, being on like number one on Sports Center and stuff like that and just having my phone blow up. Uh, beating St. Mary's and Storm in the court, mm. you, you know, Kyle Bowen, Alex yeah. Dishes, yeah, yeah, that, that, was, that was good fun, uh, getting them guys, uh, getting Gonzaga uh, at theirs as well, that was like historical and, and yeah, th those memories, I'll, I'll have them forever for sure. We know what happens in, in American media how, and it blows up and then you mm. become that sensation. Did you love that kind of attention or did you say, look, it's great, but I've got a job here to do, I'm just trying to hoop right now? 
Oh, I mean, it's great, you know. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely pretty cool. Like, like, my phone wasn't working. It was going crazy. I was on Sports Center and, like, and even just, like, my family and friends, like, on the other side of the world, they, they're seeing me, uh, like, on TV and stuff because my mother and, you know, the Aussie Islander culture for sure. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it was definitely cool for sure. The Australian basketball connection, you mentioned those guys. Uh, we've seen Kyle Bowen, a lot of talk about whether Alex Dukas will come back to the NBL now. Mm-hmm. We envision at some point in the career we're going to get to see him. How cool is it to, again, grow up and playing with in the, in the younger Australian teams, then going off in your own paths and then mm-hmm. potentially now matching up in, in Kyle Bowen? Is that a big of a full circle moment? How excited are you for those opportunities? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, that's cool as well. Like growing up playing on the, the Aussie teams and the state teams with some of these guys and then getting the chance to play them uh, every season in the WC. You see that that was awesome, uh, and, th- and now soon, like I'll, I'll be seeing him on the court again. It, it's definitely, it's definitely awesome. Yeah. Do I legally need a spot? I, uh, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to help out a little bit as much as I can. I don't know if I'm actually even capable of spotting a, a man of your size and stature, but we'll see how we go. 15 out of five. Yeah. Five. So I'm good with that. I'm ready to roll with that. Because uh, as you d- <laughs> The idea of the falling in love with the gym is one thing. And you said when you started to notice the changes in your body. Freshman year, I guess, strength and then being able to really notice strength by just looking at you. What point in your college career did you notice that? Uh, I definitely, like, I started filling out for sure. I was, I was a bit skinny going in as a freshman and then I filled out and I changed how I eat and I, I counted my macros and, and I, I did fall in love with, like, the bodybuilding scene for sure. So I, I fell in love with that. And then just consistency, you know, I just get in like most days and, and yeah, I started seeing the changes for sure. Do you have a one rep max at all or is that just yeah. what it would it be? Yeah, so, well, in college when I, I was a bit beef, like beefy, like I said, I'm, I'm in a bit of a cut now. My one rep max is four plates, so that's two, four, six, eight, 180 kg for one. So. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> it's, an, it's an insane amount. My like genes filled out, you know, I'm, I'm Samoan heritage and my mum's athletic too. So I definitely filled out and I just fell in love with it. You know, like obviously you can uh, get an edge in the in the gym, but also like the mental aspect, you know, like I, I channel my, my mental energy here. You know, when, when I'm having a bad day, good day, I get in the gym and, and yeah, it gets me my headspace right for sure. If you had to give yourself a, a player comparison, uh, whether it's NBL related, NBA related, who comes to mind? Who, who do you try to model your game on? One thing, and if that's not the same player, what do you try and look at? I guess physicality wise. Well, definitely like growing up, uh, a lot of people know, but Charles Barkley. You know, <laughs> my my mum got me a, a DVD for Christmas when I was like a little kid, and it was a Charles Barkley one, and I just fell in love with his game. He's an undersized big. He can jump a bit higher than me, but I, I can uh, bench press a lot more than him. So, so yeah, I really fell in love with his game for sure. Well, when you first get the four teams here heading ready to NBL 25 and, and you're in the weight room, it's weird to talk about a rookie in there kind of setting a bar, but what kind of is that feeling, I guess, if it's anxiety of coming into your first rookie year, but knowing, okay, I'm, I'm holding my own here no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I've been in college like five years as well, so I'm not, I don't, coming in, I don't feel like mentally I'm a, coming in as a rookie. Like, I, I feel like I do have some experience, but, but yeah, coming in and uh, definitely the weight room, I'll set the, set the bar. Like, I'm not going not gonna to be bullshitting. <laughs> I'm going to be going hard every day, so, so yeah. I'll get behind it this time. I don't even know how to get, I don't even, how do I even get around here? I don't even know my way around a weight room. I'm still flexible, Daz. Look at that. But how excited are you now to be heading into your first professional season? Signed with Sydney Kings. I know there's a relationship previously with Gorge, but it just saw, as soon as you sign, even just seeing you outside, like you're so pumped to be a part of the NBL. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm really excited. It's come like full circle with uh, Gorge and and even like Tyler Robertson and stuff. I played with him in high school with uh, Kev, Gorge and uh, Brian's brother. So, yeah, I'm I'm over the moon for sure. The fact that there's history there with Gorge's brother in high school, is that when you first met Gorge? Uh, Yeah, yeah, Kev. Oh, yeah, well, Brian uh, came down Mm. and and trained uh, the team for like like he'd come down here and there and work us out for sure. And, yeah, that's where where I met him. And I'd see in uh, Kev's office like... They've got all the photos together, you know, like in the NBL teams and all that. So, yeah. Is it a bit surreal to, to think that your first professional gig is a full time, a full circle, as you mentioned, but the greatest coach of all time? And it's going to be the first person you get to learn from in what's going to be a very long and successful professional career. Yeah, for sure. Like, like I'm truly blessed, you know, to be in this situation. Like, he's a 
he's a legendary coach and, and yeah, I'm, I'm over the moon to, to be coached by him for sure. We're just coming back on home soil, like I'm an Aussie at heart. Yeah, I just love being being back here in Australia and Melbourne for sure and, and it'll be great getting up to Sydney. We talked about wearing the green and gold for, for the games in Japan. The Olympics is going ahead this year. Is that a dream of yours to see down the future that if I can put that on in a World Cup or an Olympic tournament, that's going to be a dream come true? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, putting on the green and gold for whatever, it's, it's a dream come true. But yeah, the boomers is definitely something I've wanted to do since I was a little kid, for sure. We've seen the way that Australian basketball has grown, especially over the last 10 years. The boomers winning a bronze medal. Now we're seeing guys in the NBA. Being in America when everything is starting to kick off, guys are getting drafted, what's it like now being an Aussie? Because way back, I'm talking around 2012, when it was Paddy, it was Delhi at St. Mary's, Australians hadn't really scratched the surface of college and the NBA, but now it's just everywhere we look, there's an Australian playing at a high level. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's changing and it's great to see like all the Aussies going over to college and, and playing college basketball. You know, you've got lots of guys over there. Cody Statman's won, won a, a March of Madness like, tournament. Like, it's, it's amazing. So, yeah, it's great to see Aussies getting over there for sure. And the NBA combo and draft weight, I think, is 185 pounds. I believe it might have changed and they just try and rep as many as they can. But this is 40 pounds more than that, if my math is mathing. And let's see what... The, the yeah. <laughs> it's funny, I don't want to laugh, but it's actually laughable to see this kind of weight just get thrown around for for a laugh and, and on your birthday for I've lost count. Honestly, as soon as we hit double figures I lost count. That's <laughs> Jeepers. I could have went for 20, but... No, <laughs> that's all right. Is there anything else that you do, not on the basketball court, not in the weight room, whether it is to stay mentally clear or just to get away from hoops and, and weights altogether to just kind of stay focused? Yeah, I, I think just, like, sometimes, like, going into nature, you know, just looking at the, the flowers, the, the greenery, getting in the sun sometimes is good, the, the water. I definitely like going to the beach uh, just to get my mind off stuff and, and yeah, that kind of stuff for sure. What's the music like in the weight room for you then? Because some people listen to different things. I'm a country music fan, but I can't imagine country music would probably rev you up too much. Maybe it does, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm not much of a country music guy. I, I, you know, I listen to you know, rap for like techno stuff, a lot of stuff. And, and even maybe me and my boy Will from Sydney, we, we also got our, our own couple few songs. I, I put them on too when, when, I, when I... Hang on. When I so you, uh, you've, you've... What is this? Are we talking techno stuff or you get on some tunes and you actually put some lyrics out? Oh yeah, we get on some tunes and get some, some raps on for sure, yeah. <laughs> now, people, again, when we type in your name on YouTube, a lot of highlights come up, but is this on YouTube? Not yet, but it, but it probably will be soon, you know, stay tuned for sure. Hey, I like that as a little birthday plug. <laughs> Back in college, I'd get on FIFA and play a couple of FIFA games before just to, to let loose for sure, so yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you a bit of a video game. Is FIFA the main one? Is that what the guys like to get around? Because I'm, I'm a big FIFA fan as well, but again, I wasn't really competitive in the weight room, which it seems like you very much are, but I'm very competitive on the video game. Are you just competitive all the time? Yeah, definitely competitive every time. No matter what it is, yeah, I'm competing and I'm talking too. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What is, I guess, a short-term goal of yours and then a longer-term goal on the basketball floor? Uh, just, I mean, short term is just win, you know, just keep getting better at basketball and just, just win wherever I'm at. And then I, I want to travel the world, I, like the NBA, of course, is, is, is a goal of mine and, and yeah. Give us a couple of insights for, for fans can expect for you on the floor as well, because being an enforcer is one thing, big screens, but there's a whole lot more to your game. And we saw that in college, your highlights are fun to watch, but what can Sydney fans expect from you when you hit the floor? Oh yeah, definitely just the, the toughness stuff. I'll be diving on the floor, setting the screens. I can shoot, I'll be shooting threes, getting on the boards and just, just doing whatever it takes, you know, just to get us over the edge of the 1% stuff. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. And I'll be having my teammates back if, you know, getting a little push and shove for sure. I, I didn't <laughs> want to go down that, but I'm glad that you said that because every team does need an enforcer. And again, I, it, it's strange to think of a rookie being an enforcer, but it, that's one, one thing that you will bring, as you said, you, your teammates back. Xavier Cooks now announced the signing. You said Robbo and Brian Gorgian's obviously there as a head coach. How excited are you about this team that's coming together for the Kings? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Like I said, it's, I, I feel like it's full circle and, and I think it's the right place, the right time. And, and it, it, it looks like we've got all the right guys uh, coming together for sure. Were you always wanting to come back and play in the NBL straight after college or did you think, look, I'll assess all my options and whatever's best at the time or is that one of your main focuses? I definitely uh, thought about like other options. Like I said, even the, the NFL, I did think about it for, really? a, for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, 
I can so I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I thought about that. But, but I wanted to come home, and and the NBL was always like uh, like a place in my mind for sure to come play. A lot of reports after NBL 23 that you were potentially signing last year before your fifth year. Were you close to potentially going pro at that time? And again, what was the ultimate deciding factor of look? I can, can do one more year in college. I'm going to do that fifth year, and then I'll probably be better prepared to be a professional. Yeah, well, yeah, I definitely was uh, thinking about coming out of college for sure. Um, and I had some chats so like with my family. Luke Longley uh, reached out, and, and he really helped me as well. And I just thought, yeah, college, like one more year, like I'm not, never going to get that back mm. if I went pro. I can't go back to college. So uh, I thought, yeah, it was the right decision. Why the Sydney Kings in the end? Because a lot of teams are one of the services of yourself, and for good reason, it seems. And not just this year, but obviously last year, the, the phone calls kept picking up. What ended up getting you across the line of the Sydney Kings? I mean, definitely, like like I said, I keep saying it, the full circle thing, like mm. Gorge coming in, like he's a legendary coach. Um, it's an honour to be able to play for him. And then like the other guys, just the Sydney guys, you know, it seems like they're all about the right thing. And, and Xavier Cook's coming back. Like there's there's a lot of court and they're, they're, they're good players for me to, you know, uh, like bang around with and <laughs> play with them for sure. So, yeah. Are you a bit of a trash talker on the floor? Is that something that, did that always the way you played and in terms of being that competitive or did that grow over time? No, yeah, I've always been a bit of a shit talker. <laughs> <laughs> so you are going to probably have a few run-ins and in, in practice with Kuwait Noi because Kuwait Noi likes to talk the talk and then walk the walk after that. It seems like you two will get along pretty well. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I love that, you know, competitive uh, energy for sure and that, that's, that'll help us, you know, get better, both of us. So, yeah. When you're not playing, when you're just winding down, going to the beach, what, what would be your, I guess, let's say you've played on a Saturday night, you've got the Sunday off from the Kings. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous said everybody, good win, got the Sunday off. What does your dream Sunday recovery day look like? If you have absolutely no things to have to show up for Sydney mm -hmm. Kings, wise, what would you like to do? Oh, I, I, will, I will get in the gym. <laughs> probably get in the gym for a little sesh and then uh, go to the beach, you know, like Bondi Beach is there. So I'll definitely check that stuff out and just hang with the boys, yeah, and just, yeah, have fun, you know. Yeah, we appreciate all this and learning more about you. We're excited to see you hit the floor uh, in September. It's been announced Hoops Fest. I do want to ask a little bit about that. Everybody's going to be in Perth for round one. You're going to be part of your first official NBL game, a part of history that we, what we're building. How excited are you to be in Perth to kick it all off? Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah, it's going to be good fun for sure. You've actually mentioned before I let you go, you mentioned Kyle Bowen. Do you have certain matchups or a certain team that you're most looking forward to playing? I mean, Melbourne will be a good one for sure. You know, it's, it's home and I have my friends at the game. So definitely Melbourne and, and yeah. <laughs> what about any individual matchups? Uh, is Kyle Bowen the one? I mean, you talk about guys you grew up with either playing alongside or playing against. Do you have anybody that you're going to really circle on the calendar say, I'm looking forward to this one? Oh, mate, I've always got someone on, e on each team I got circled on the calendar for sure. But yeah, Kyle Bowen, it will be a fun matchup, like just like in college, but yeah. Mate, we appreciate it. We can't wait to see you hit the floor. We're stoked that you're part of the NBL and it's going to be fun to see you in Sydney Kings colours. So happy birthday and thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for, for everything, for sure.